In this video, we will be connecting to our SQL Managed Instance unit using the VNet local endpoint. We will be using this architecture diagram to create the uh, virtual network gateway and we will use the gateway to connect to the SQL Managed Instance securely using the VNet local endpoint. So in the previous video, we have seen how you can use the public endpoint to connect to the SQL managed instance. But the problem with that is that you need to expose your uh, database to the Internet, which is obviously a very bad practice. You can always secure the public endpoint, but there is always a limitation that it is always exposed. First of all, let's start our managed instance. You always have the uh, flexibility to turn off your or shut down your managed instance to save costs. So I do that, but uh, my managed instance is a free tier, so I do not mind. But just to show you that how you can do this, uh, I wanted to you know uh, stop and start the instance. So once our instance is up, we will be creating our virtual network gateway. The instance should be up in a few minutes. So, yep, that's successfully started. I have created this uh, resource group called RG Networking. This is where I will be creating my uh, networking resources. Uh, I'll select, I'll search for virtual network gateway and I'll select that and let's create it. The options available, uh, the name of the virtual network gateway. I will be using the you know uh, VNG as an identifier, which is an abbrevi abbreviation from Microsoft. Uh, I'll be using UK South, and gateway type is VPN. The SKU is VPN GW1. Generation one. Virtual network. This is the virtual network where my virtual uh, so my managed instance is sitting we have created that virtual network in our last video before uh, creating our managed instance the gateway subnet address range is 10.0.1 slash 24 that should be okay public endpoint create new I'll give a VNG pip 1 and uh, yeah I do not want active active so that should be okay uh, everything looks good let me submit my deployment uh, it should take anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes to get it created i have just fast forwarded it and our virtual network gateway is uh, successfully deployed let's go to configuration and see i have got active active mode disabled uh, let's go to point to site configuration Let's configure now. Uh, we will be use, using our Azure Active Directory authentication. So uh, you can go to Microsoft's documentation for creating a point to site virtual private network uh, and authenticating uh, using your Azure Active Directory. I always refer back to uh, Microsoft's documentation whenever I configure this. So yeah, there's no shame in referring the documentation. So yeah, we will be using this and I know my address range is 192. Uh, so that's 192.168.0.24 slash, uh, slash 32. Uh, that, but that would create just a point. I think we need, uh, yeah, let's, we can edit that later. Uh, in the documentation, you can see uh, if we are using Azure VPN, we will need to register it in our enterprise and that's your identity for your uh, Azure VPN. It's fine. We will be using that. We will configure that, configure it after this step. That's your audience and issuer. So the tenant is your tenant. Uh, audience is your Azure VPNs. Uh, uh, you know uh, enterprise application identity or the object ID and your issuer is uh, the, the URL sfs.windows.net followed by your tenant ID 
so that is all let's save this yeah there was this pro uh, you know i had an incorrect tunnel type open vpn so that's also done while our vpn uh, is getting set up let's configure or you know just authorize your azure vpn application in your azure active directory or enter id use the url uh, paste it in your browser enter and you should be able to allow azure vpn as your enterprise application in enter id so that is done if i go back to my enter id and you can see this application is now available and that's your audience and everything else is exactly how we wanted so that bit is done let's now download azure vpn client on our laptop yep azure vpn client that's the one let's download let me provide my password for that That should be it. Uh, while it downloads, let's go back and check what we have. So, on the site, let's download our VPN client configuration. So, if you go to your VPN uh, virtual network gateway in settings, uh, point to site configuration, you should be able to download the VPN client configuration once we have it we will import this config file into our azure vpn client let's click on this plus sign import and the file that we just downloaded azure vpn and this xml file you don't have to do anything here the authentication type is azure active directory which is exactly what we want let's sign in the first time you do it it will ask you to sign in okay that looks good now once uh, this connection has, has been established we should be able to see point to site uh, session in our virtual network gateway in azure so let's head back to our portal let's refresh this we should see a session here yep so we can see our session running that's exactly what we wanted let's disable the public endpoint for our managed instance if you go to security networking and you should be able to disable public endpoint if you see in brackets it's the data so that's your public endpoint for your database once that is done uh, your database should not be reach you know reachable via the public endpoint and if you try to connect it will tell you that the public endpoint has been disabled It takes a few seconds and let's fast forward. So we have successfully uh, updated the settings. If you see, we are using the VNet local endpoints in this case, which is a uh, very default behavior. So it's like a default endpoint that gets created. We are not talking about private endpoint in this video. We will be talking about that in our next video. Uh, as you can see, uh, private endpoints are more secure and you know, uh, there are uh, like scenarios where you should be using private endpoints and not the vnet local uh, like it gives you a better uh, you know in terms of security it gives you a better comfort and 
uh, it also like if you're having an, a hub spoke topology it's better to have private endpoints because then you can have a private endpoint sitting in your hub and then yeah you can connect using your any vpn devices so these are the you know uh, why you should be using private endpoints but vnet local endpoint is uh, also secure enough which we are using in this current video uh, there are a few limitations when it comes to private endpoint that we need to know the limitations as well uh, yeah, as uh, you know uh, it doesn't uh, private endpoints do not have the automatic dns registration but uh, we will talk about it in our later video but for now let's use the host name to connect and we should be able to connect to the vnet local endpoint so we have successfully connected to managed instance using the vnet local endpoint now if i refresh the public endpoint that we have previously connected we should receive an error and the error should be that instance cannot be found so let's quickly wait for the error but yeah, that, that was a quick video on uh, connecting your VNet local endpoint for a managed instance. Uh, we also configured everything starting from VPN gateway to virtual network and everything. So yeah, thank you for watching and stay connected. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.